Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to my uh, to my zoology class. Today also we're going to study from the chapter microbes in human welfare. Today we're going to focus on a very important topic that is called the biogas. When you hear the word bio, you know that it's something to do with the living component, right? So a biogas will obviously be a gas from some living component. So we're going to focus on that. Why? Because we're going to focus on the gas that is formed by microorganisms which are useful in our household day-to-day -day activities. Okay, so how do you define a biogas? A biogas is a methane-rich gas produced by anaerobic breakdown or digestion of biomass. So when you talk about methane, you know the in chemistry, you know the formula, right? CH4. And when you talk about anaerobic, what do you mean by that? Anaerobic breakdown means the breakdown of complex compound into simpler compounds in the absence of oxygen or digestion of biomass. That is the waste material. Just think of it as the waste material in this case, okay? With the help of bacteria. So... When you talk about uh, this process, what they are saying is that there is a specific bacteria which will eat the organic waste, okay? When it eats the organic waste and then breaks down into simpler compounds, it releases a gas. Just remember that. This gas is used in the same way like your LPG cylinder where you will use it for cooking and household activities. So. What is, so, what is the bacteria, the microorganism that is involved? The particular bacteria is named as methanobacterium. Methano, that means it is rich in methane and it is a bacteria. So when you make a bio, when you produce a biogas, how do you produce a biogas? You need a specific structure, okay? This specific structure was first introduced in, in India, it was very advanced in India. In the, the Indian scientists and all, they made this first this gas with the help of cow dungs. You, there were lots of cows in India. There are large mass production of you know uh, cow breeding and all, and then and then you get lots of cows, right? So what they did was that they took the cow dung, okay, and then they mixed it with water in one tank, okay. Remember that that tank is called a mixing tank. After it, it got mixed, the cow dung and the water, after it got mixed, it formed a slurry. That's the reason why it's called slurry of cattle dung and water. So this slurry of cattle dung and water in the mixing tank now then moved okay, to this tank called a digester tank. The word itself digester indicates that it, it is digesting something, right? So it is called a digester tank in which there will be microbes present. These microbes will break down the cattle dung and then it will start eating the organic matter in the cattle dung. You know that cows eat lots of grass, right? So there are lots of organic matter in the waste product. So the bacteria, the meat, specifically the methanobacterium will start eating lots of the cow dung, the organic matter. When it starts eating, what happened was that they started releasing gases. Remember that these gases were called the biogas. So this mixing tank now moved through the inlet pipe to the, <coughs> excuse me, digester tank in which they kept on digesting as they kept on digesting the the gas went up and got collected in this floating gas holder remember that this floating gas holder was used to collect the biogas okay so the gases were all collected here all the gases were collected here after the digestion complete digestion occurred and all the gases were collected what will happen was that the waste product now the waste product will go out through the outlet pipe to another tank called the, in which there there is the spent slurry s l u w r y that means the waste product that is left behind after the bacteria digest all the organic matter remember that so this spent slurry 
Now we we'll go to the fields. Why do they go to the fields? Because it can act as a manure. Remember that. So see, a waste product is giving two benefits, right? One is it is giving you gas for household activities. The second one is it is giving you manure to throw, to put in the fields and then to let the crops grow in abundance, right? So. In the long run, is it beneficial or not? It is beneficial, right? So this floating gas holder will collect all the gas and then it can be controlled to the gas valve where this will be connected to the household kitchen your know, kitchen stoves, remember that. And then people can use it for cooking. That's the most important thing. Okay. So the the bacteria and all, they digest it. So the bacteria, they digest the organic matter. Besides digesting the organic matter, what happens inside? That means the steps in which the organic matters are digested. These are the steps, okay? The complex organic compound, that will be the cow dung, okay? Remember that. The cow dung will get introduced to the microbes decomposer. Microbes decomposer here will be the bacteria, right? Metano, uh, metanomo, uh, metanobacterium. So this bacteria will be in the tank where they will be waiting for the cow dung, which is in the form of complex organic compound. Why is it called complex organic compound? Because it is it has not been broken down into simpler compounds. Remember that. So this bacteria will wait for them and then there, there will be uh, enzymes, E-N-Z-Y-M-E-S, enzymes released by the bacteria called cellulase, protease, lipase. The first word that comes to your mind when you talk about cellulase is breakdown of cellulose, right? That is found in plants when you talk about chlorophyll. So that means they are breaking down the plant product. The second one is protease. Protease means it is breaking down complex proteins. Remember that. Lipase means it is breaking down complex lipids. Remember that. So this complex organic compounds now breaks down into monomers. Remember, simpler ones. These monomers again are reacted upon by the microbes, that is the bacteria, to break down into organic acid. You know what is organic acid, right? So uh, organic acid now again it is reacted upon by the bacteria, methanogenic bacteria that is, to form a gas that is called the biogas. Remember that this biogas is composed of uh, this biogas is composed of methane CH4. Sorry, it's written too, but it's CH4, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and nitrogen. These are all the composition that is found in the biogas which is useful for providing household household gases. Okay, remember that. So now we will move on to the next one that is use of microbes as biocontrol agents. That means they are controlling something, right? They are going to control something. So the first one is as bioherbicides. When you talk about bioherbicides, the first thing that should come to your mind is about weeds. Remember that, W-E-E-D-S. You know what are weeds, right? Those are those useless um, plants and all, which are not beneficial, which so suddenly starts growing in the fields along with the rices and crops and all. So you need to remove them, right? This, those are not beneficial for us because they eat up all the nutrients, of, uh, nutrients from the soil that is to be give uh, to be taken by the crops remember that so now they're saying that microbes can be used as a bioherbicide means for killing weeds remember that okay so well, some of the common examples are a name called divin d e v i n e and collago c o l l a g o this that is a name a product that is produced okay by the uh, by the industries from fungal spores that means from fungus 
from the fungus f-u-n-g-u-s they make a medicine called divine and collego which is used for controlling weeds in india remember that that is used for controlling weeds and preventing the weeds from growing along with the crops remember that another example is transgenic crop plant resistant to herbicides what do you mean by that the the word itself transgenic genic means it has to do with genes right so transgenic crops are those genetically modified crops which will be resistant to weeds that means even if weeds grow also they, they will kill it it will like they will slowly kill the weeds and they will grow stronger okay that means it's like survival of the fittest where the crops are the crops are the fittest remember that okay so next one is as bio insecticides bio insecticides means what insecticides means it is used for killing insects right the insects which are harmful to the plants and the crops so one example is a bacteria called bacillus b a c i -E l u s bacillus thuringiensis t h u r i n g i e n s i s this is a bacteria that is sprayed as dry spores okay SPOR is you know what are spores so they are sprayed on the crops when they are sprayed on the crops what will happen is that let's take example of a locust okay you know what is a locust it comes and starts eating the eating the uh, this thing let's say they start eating the wheat so when this this bacillus thuringiensis is sprayed on the wheat the, the, the locust will eat it when it eats the uh, this bacteria will go to the locust stomach that is called the gut and will start forming holes those are called pores so the it will start forming holes in the gut of the locust as a result of which obviously if there is a hole in your stomach obviously you'll die right so outer in the outer appearance the locust will be it would they will look all normal okay but inside the stomach will be all perforated that means there will be lots of pores and then they will die okay this that's the reason why it is called a bio insecticide the second example is introduction of bacillus thuringiensis okay this is called bacillus thuringiensis the same one as the bacteria bt cotton by genetic engineering this is a very interesting topic uh, which you can you can go browse through the internet also this b, this is very common bt cotton bt cotton you talked about in class 11 also this is a genetically modified that means a foreign gene was introduced in that cotton okay a genetically modified cotton in which the genes of the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis is already embedded in their gene okay as a result of which they become resistant to insects how the bt cotton when when it is eaten the the same process as the one where you form perforation right so the bt cotton will prevent any any pests to infest them as a result of which the cotton will be produced in large quantity the most common example is in india okay where cottons are produced in large quantity because of this genetically modified process where most of the cottons are now called bt cotton remember that okay so what are the advantages what are the advantages you know what are the advantages right it will help in mass production of your crops it will help in prevent or it will help in giving you lots of food right it will it will help in uh, it will help in providing biogas that is the gases there are lots of advantages of microbes besides that it will help in giving you food it will help in giving you production large production of antibiotics it will help in providing you enzymes right this there are so many advantages of microbes that's why they are called they are also called harm uh, beneficial microbes okay and then uh, besides this that in the third one we're going to discuss on the uses of microbes as biofertilizers how are microbes used as fertilizers you know what are fertilizers right fertilizers are those where the enrichment is got from the crops remember that okay 
So the most common example is symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria. You know what is symbiosis, right? A process where both the parties are benefited. Remember that. So in this case, symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria, you have already heard about it in class 9 and 10. There is a particular a particular uh, name called rhizobium, remember that. This rhizobium which forms root nodules in the legume crops, okay. These crops, there are specific cross legume crops. The most common example is peas, okay. So what will happen is that this rhizobium, this bacteria will go to the roots, roots of the peas and then it will form like bulb bulb shape. That's the reason why you see bulb shapes in the roots of the peas, okay. These bulb shapes are the rhizobium in which they will start collecting nitrogen. That means they are atmospheric nitrogen, they will fix it, fixing of atmospheric nitrogen. As a result of which you know that nitrogen is a rich fertilizer, right? So when the piece, when the piece after it grows to a certain stage, it will die off. So for after it dies off, it will provide fertilizer to the next crop during crop rotation. Next example is Azola. It is a small water plant with cyanobacteria called Anabena which will help in combination, which will help in rice fields. That is just a common example. The next one is fungi as biofertilizers. You know what's a fungus, right? So you have seen in some tree barks and all you see, you see the green like or film like structures. Those are all fungal associations in tree barks and all. Okay. So this myco mycorrhiza, that is a fungi, has a symbiotic association with the trees. Remember that. So what will happen is that you will see in trees like oak, pine, peach tree and then orchids, tobacco, rubber plants tree where you will see F fungal type of structure okay they will help in trapping nitrogen besides this they go inside the tree structure and then the fungus will stay inside to help them in collecting the nitrogen remember that okay so th these are all the points for today's class and then in the next class we'll talk about a completely different topic okay so see you next class